So that kind of leads me to my ideas for how you can use photography to inspire environmental responsibility in your students. I don't think it's only a matter of showing kids photos. It's also a matter of allowing them to take photos, allowing them to use photography as a mode of connection and expression. Yeah, I see a great comment. It starts by educating children. I think you're absolutely right. So I just want to ask, how many of you are using photography right now in your classrooms? Are any of you using photo projects or digital cameras or photo-based um, projects to teach? OK, I'm seeing some. Great idea. No, but I'm going to get on it. OK, great. I'm glad. That's the, that's the point of this webinar is to inspire you to do it. OK, some of, some of you say you use it very often. And you teach Photoshop. And you use National Geographic books with pictures, iPads to take photos. So this is great. So it's good to hear that this is how you're using photography already. So as we talked about earlier, kids are spending less and less time outside. And I think it's easy to kind of demonize technology, right? To blame screens and computers and cell phones for kids spending less time outdoors. But at the same time, I really think we have to acknowledge that kids are going to have technology as a part of their lives. And our young learners are going to grow up with all of these digital technologies. So I think the question for me kind of becomes, how can we harness these technologies to inspire kids to connect with nature? And I really think that cameras are one of the best ways to bridge that gap. So I've come up with a few photography projects that you can use in your young learner classrooms to connect kids with nature. And just in case some of you aren't photographers and you don't know that much about photography yourself, I've also created a list of tips to help you teach photography in your classrooms. And as Dave said, we've got a package for you to take home, but right now I'm going to share some additional projects with you as well as some tips for how to teach. So the first project, it's one of my favorite to do with young students, is a photo scavenger hunt. So what you're able to do with a photo scavenger hunt is provide a checklist of possible things for kids to look for with their camera. You can use circles, for instance. So in this case, we found circles in mushrooms and flowers and in this beautiful spider web. Or you could also ask them to look for patterns, for repetitive patterns. And you can do this with any number of things. You can look for colors or different shapes. And what I recommend is, that you try a series of assignments. So you give them this little checklist, which we've actually prepared for you. And then when they're finished, you gather up the photos and look at them together. So you look at how each student has seen circles or each student has seen triangles. And what you'll see is that all of these kids have a different creative interpretation of nature. This activity really teaches observational skills and it gets kids to pay attention to nature in a way that they hadn't before. They really kind of transform their relationship with the environment. Kind of one of my, my favorite experiences with this was a girl who went out in her schoolyard. Um, we took her out, took the students out for an hour. They went out and looked and photographed. And she told me later that she started looking at a tree that she passed every day in the schoolyard in a completely different way. She never paid attention to the bark and the beautiful roots. And it had suddenly transformed her relationship with that tree, and she appreciated it in a totally different way. This is, oh, I got a great comment here. Somebody says, you can connect this with geometry. And you're absolutely right. You can absolutely connect this photo learning with not just environmental um, learning or natural history. You could connect it with geometry and math as well. So my next project idea for you guys is to create a species collage. And in this case, you know, I think when kids start exploring nature and they start photographing these animals or these plants, they become really interested in learning more about the species. So what you can do is assign them to learn more about a bird or a plant that's found in your neighborhood or in your country. And you can have them cut out photos and write facts about this species and either create a print collage where they paste and glue pictures and text onto a piece of paper, 
Or you could do this digitally. You could actually have them go online and create a blog or a web page or design using Photoshop. Some of you said you were using Photoshop to create this collage. And what I think would be really fun is to have your whole class do this on a different species, each student on a different animal. And you could collate all of these collages into a book that essentially creates a guide to nature in your schoolyard or in your community. So I think that that's a great way to get kids together to learn about nature as a group and to really take pride in the animals that are found just around your school. Now, one of my other favorite things to do with photography is to use photography to study the change in seasons and the change in weather. So this is another way you can kind of connect kids to their surroundings. So what I suggest here, you only need like one camera for your classroom in this, in this activity. You could actually take a place near your school, maybe a woodland behind your school, or maybe just a single tree or a plant in the front of the school. And you ask the students to photograph it every day or every week or every month for your entire school year. And what you can see when you pile up these images is how the seasons change over the course of a year or how the weather changes over the course of a year. And so I imagine that this will really help connect your students to the seasons and make them think about how the climate changes in a way that they can't just by looking at a textbook or a picture, you know, a single picture. So I hope that you'll try that and I'd love to see some of the results of that. So if you do that, please do send them to me. You'll have my website and contact information at the end of the presentation. So yeah, I see in my country, El Salvador, we have just two seasons, winter and summer, and I can try this idea. I think that's a great idea. It would be so neat to see how this works out in different countries around the world. And we could really create as a group this beautiful snapshot of weather and share that with each other as educators so we can show how seasons are different in different parts of the world. So this final project, which I really love doing with young learners, is to create a diorama. So um, in this case, what I do is actually create a list of different habitats or different um, types of landscapes. So maybe a lake or an ocean or a swamp or a desert. And then I have kids pick one of these pieces of paper out of a hat, and that's how they get assigned their certain habitat. Then we use a cereal box for the top of this diorama. So we cut open a cereal box, and then we use a piece of cardboard for the bottom. And then kids can take magazine photos, they can take photos they've taken, they can use paint and glue, and they can create a diorama of this habitat so they learn not just about a single animal, but about kind of the animal's home. Like, where does this animal live? What does it need to live? Does it need water? Does it like, you know, swampy areas? Does it need sunshine? So I think this is a great way to teach kids not just about a single species, but about how animals need healthy homes just like we do.